in the last lecture uh, we talked about linear systems and uh, linear systems are modeled by these uh, state equations and uh, property of linear systems is that they always follow superposition principle in addition to that linear systems always have unique equilibrium point what is the equilibrium point equilibrium point is the point uh, if the trajectories uh, start at that point the trajectories will stay at that particular point so it can be very easily computed by substituting uh, all the derivatives equal to zero if we substitute uh, all the derivatives equal to zero that means no change and that can be uh, therefore we can find the equilibrium points uh, therefore uh, for this uh, particular state equation with input equal to zero uh, we have uh, this equation to determine the equilibrium points and you always get uh, a unique equilibrium point there is one exception that is uh, you may have multiple equilibrium points but in that case all those uh, equilibrium points will be non isolated equilibrium points uh, furthermore for linear systems stability is independent of initial conditions if the system is stable it will stay stable for all initial conditions uh, that is also apparent from the solution to this uh, state equation input is zero in this case so this is the solution uh, so whatever is the initial condition uh, stability only depends upon this exponential term if that is decaying uh, the trajectories will uh, decay to the equilibrium point uh, furthermore stability is also independent of the input to the system uh, if uh, this system without input that is stable then this system will remain stable uh, for any input for any bounded input for any bounded input the trajectories will remain bounded uh, that is also apparent from the solution to this uh, state equation uh, so these are a few properties of linear uh, systems furthermore uh, if you apply a sinusoidal input to a linear system the output is uh, always a sinusoidal and uh, the frequency of the output sinusoid is the same as frequency of the input sinusoid compared to that uh, for linear systems superposition may not hold uh, we talked about one example in the last lecture here is a system and uh, uh, nonlinearity is over here here was the response uh, this rising edge is for positive step and this falling edge is for negative step we can see that the response of the system for the two inputs is not just a scaled version uh, here uh, for positive uh, input uh, this uh, uh, is uh, this rising is uh, this rise is faster whereas for negative step this decay is slower and uh, uh, furthermore uh, for different inputs for example input equal to 1 we had this response and for input equal to 10 we had this uh, response that is uh, scaling the input does not uh, result into the uh, corresponding scale in the scaling in the output hence a uh, superposition may not be applicable in nonlinear systems uh, nonlinear systems may have multiple isolated equilibrium points uh, linear systems can have only unique isolated equilibrium point example is over here here we have a nonlinear system pendulum system the equations which govern uh, the working of this pendulum these are described by these state equations nonlinearity is over here this sinusoid a uh, sine of x1 that uh, is a nonlinear term and uh, we can easily find the equilibrium points by substituting x1 dot equal to 0 and x2 dot equal to 0 so by that substitution we have uh, these two equations and solving uh, these two equations uh, that uh, results into uh, these solutions so there are multiple isolated equilibrium points in this nonlinear system uh, two isolated equilibrium points uh, because uh, this equilibrium point and this one uh, these are the same physically the same uh, this system can have uh, at least two isolated equilibrium points that is not possible in linear systems 
uh, linear systems can have uh, multiple equilibrium points uh, but only uh, the case is that uh, they are uh, connected or adjacent equilibrium points. These are indicated by small dots over here. These are not dots. This is a continuous uh, line. All the points on that line are the equilibrium points for this linear system. So this was uh, a discussion in the last lecture and uh, we learned for uh, uh, linear systems uh, the stability does not depend upon initial conditions. Whereas for nonlinear systems, stability may depend upon initial conditions. Here is one example. We have a nonlinear system, first order uh, differential equation. Nonlinearity is over here, this x squared term that adds nonlinearity. Uh, we can easily find uh, the equilibrium points to this uh, system uh, by substituting uh, all derivatives to be equal to 0. So uh, there are two equilibrium points, one is at uh, origin x equal to 0 and the second equilibrium point is at x equal to 1. Simply solving the equation minus x plus x square equal to 0, uh, we get these two solutions to that particular equation. So here uh, is the response uh, of this system for different initial conditions. Uh, we can even uh, show it uh, over here in the MATLAB. So uh, this uh, equation over here, uh, x dot is equal to minus x plus x square. Uh, it can be simply implemented uh, here. If uh, this is x dot, then this thing will be the integral of x dot is x. So x dot is equal to uh, here. Here we have x square and here we have x, x square minus x. We have implemented that equation. Initial conditions can be set over here. Uh, uh, so initial condition, uh, let's uh, set it to be equal to 0.9, for example. Uh, and the response uh, of the system to this particular initial condition, that is shown over here. So is it visible to you or not? not visible. So you can see that uh, this response is decaying down to uh, the equilibrium point at uh, x equal to 0 for this particular initial condition x uh, 0 equal to 0.9. For another initial condition, for example, uh, initial condition equal to 1, uh, here is the response. Uh, since uh, 1 x equal to 1 is equilibrium point, if trajectories start at that point, these will stay at that point that we already know. So the trajectory starting at 1 that stays at 1. Uh, let's take uh, some other initial condition, for example, 1.1. Uh, .1. And uh, the trajectories, uh, this becomes unstable, this uh, error warning that shows that system is becoming unstable is visible over here. So for this particular input, uh, the response is growing to infinity. Uh, that is for nonlinear systems, stability depends upon uh, initial conditions. For uh, initial condition equal to minus one, the response was converging to origin. For initial condition equal to zero, the response stayed at zero. For initial condition less than 1 and greater than 0, it again converts to origin. So that is not possible in linear systems. For nonlinear systems, stability may depend upon initial conditions. Furthermore, for nonlinear systems, stability may also depend upon the input. For linear systems, you already know stability is independent of input if the system is stable that will remain stable for any bounded input. That is not the case for nonlinear systems. Here, uh, for example, we have this system, x dot is equal to x u. This is a nonlinear system, this product term that creates uh, uh, nonlinearity. Uh, for u equal to minus 1, what are the dynamics of the system? x dot is equal to minus x. 
and you already know that this uh, state equation is a stable equation right you can easily determine the eigenvalues uh, this becomes uh, with uh, with u equal to minus 1 it uh, becomes uh, a linear system and you can easily determine the stability that is quite obvious that this system is stable uh, system and uh, for u equal to plus 1 this is the system which is obviously an unstable system so for nonlinear systems stability may also depend upon the input that was not the case for linear systems there is another uh, interesting phenomena uh, in nonlinear system that is called finite escape time what is that for linear systems you know that uh, if a linear system is unstable its response will grow to infinity how much time it will take for the response to reach to infinity for example uh, if we have this uh, linear system its uh, solution is simply given by uh, this equation and uh, uh, you can see that if this term is growing it will take infinite time for the response to reach to infinity this is uh, for our linear system however for uh, nonlinear systems it may take finite time for the response to reach to infinity example is over here here we have a nonlinear system uh, x dot is equal to minus x square the solution to this uh, nonlinear differential equation is given by this relation you can easily verify that this thing satisfies uh, this equation take uh, the derivative of uh, x with respect to time and then you will find that uh, this equation is satisfied so this is a solution to this nonlinear differential equation how much time uh, you can see that at t equal to 1 t equal to 1 what is uh, response of the system infinity so it can take finite time for the response to reach to infinity for a nonlinear system so this is called finite escape time that is not possible in uh, linear systems uh, that we have already talked uh, that uh, for uh, linear systems a uh, periodic input produces uh, the output uh, of the same frequency right uh, whereas for nonlinear systems we shall see that even uh, if uh, you for example apply a sinusoidal input to that system the output may not be a sinusoidal 